Hi guys and welcome to Total Technic. In this video we're going to be showing you how to do a fluid change for your transfer case. And this particular video will cover a lot of different models across the Audi and VW range. If you have a quick look at your transfer case, and if you find that you have two plugs on the side like these ones here, then absolutely this video will be exactly what you need. Now one of the biggest problems when it comes to uh, this particular job is actually gaining access to the transfer case. We need to have fairly good access uh, to these two plugs. And to be able to get that access, obviously that's going to vary massively between different models of vehicles. For example, if you've got something like the Audi Q7, like we're working on today, uh, that's a fairly large SUV, and sometimes they even have an air suspension option, which you can lift it even higher. So access on something big like this generally isn't too bad. You can normally crawl in underneath. But on much smaller vehicles, things like the Audi A1, Audi A3, things like that, access is going to be much, much more limited. And so in those instances, you may well have to lift the vehicle. Now, lifting the vehicle itself uh, isn't the problem. The problem is that we need to lift that vehicle evenly because these uh, plugs here, as you'll see as we go through the uh, process, are wholly reliant on gravity. And so, for example, if you just jack up the front of the car, then obviously that's going to throw gravity completely off and that will throw these fill levels off. So if you are going to lift the vehicle, you need to lift all four corners evenly. And obviously without a, a lift or a ramp, that's quite a difficult thing to do. So you'll likely have to use uh, axle stands or, or things of that nature so you can get a nice easy even lift on each of the corners and unfortunately it is a complete pain if you don't have a ramp uh, to do that lift part of the job often just lifting the car is a lot more complex than actually changing the fluid itself but whatever you decide to do just remember that however you do it the car must be lifted evenly you can't just jack up one end or the other end and whatever you do please be sure to work safely now as a general rule uh, the audi and vw workshop manual usually uh, recommends as it always does for virtually everything uh, that if you remove these uh, plugs that they're replaced with brand new. However, in reality, what most people do is they actually tend to reuse these plugs. And it's generally not a problem to do so, unless of course you find one that's uh, completely rusted out and you, you struggle to get it out and you, you're worried about that it might round off and obviously you don't want to be putting that same plug back in. So you may well want to look at getting uh, brand new plugs uh, at your own discretion, but if they look kind of a, a fairly healthy, most people would reuse these. Now a question that gets asked a lot is how often should you change the fluid in your transfer case? And this can vary a little bit depending on your specific model. Now to give you some idea, we're working on an Audi Q7 today and the fluid should be changed on these every 80 to 90,000 miles. But of course that can be less uh, depending on your driving style. And as I did mention before, that can vary from model to model. So if you're unsure, it's always best to do a quick Google search and to check how often this should be changed for your specific car. And whilst you're doing that search, you should also do a search to make sure that you find the correct uh, fluid for your transfer case. And often the best way to do this is to go to the website of the oil manufacturer uh, whose oil you'd like to use and do a search for your specific vehicle there using their oil finder tool and then search down through their options to find what oil they recommend for your transfer case. And in our particular example on our Audi Q7 here, uh, we're using Valvoline and this is the product that they recommend on their website for this particular vehicle. So we're doing a quick Google search and you should be able to find out the exact fluid for your car in less than a few minutes. So when it comes to the transfer case, uh, this process is actually very, very simple. What you need to do is locate the uh, transfer case on your vehicle and have a look on it. And you should see that uh, on one of the uh, sides of it, on this particular one on the Q7, this is kind of uh, towards the uh, pointing towards the rear, it's on the back here and we have uh, these two plugs just here. So if you have a look around your transfer case, you should be able to locate uh, two plugs that look just like this. And if for any reason you're uh, struggling to find them on your particular model, uh, then you can always do a quick Google search to find the location as well. And the way that this works is really, really simple. Obviously there's, uh, there's fluid uh, inside this uh, transfer case. And what we're going to do is uh, when you remove this lower one, obviously the fluid comes out and you use the upper one to uh, refill the fluid. So if you take that out, fluid comes out, pop that one back in and then you can uh, fill the fluid and the fluid level will come up again. Once that fluid starts to come out of that hole, you've reached the correct level and then you can put that plug back in and that's essentially job done. So it is very, very simple. However, as I mentioned before, because it's, you know, it is literally that simple, it's 100% reliant on gravity, which is why your car must be lifted evenly. And that's why, as I mentioned before, you can't just jack up one end of the car. So as long as your, uh, your car's nice and level, you'll get a nice even fill. Now, it's often a good idea on these to take your car for a quick five minute drive before you do this job. The reason being is to get that oil nice and warm 
And so when you take this out, uh, it makes the, uh, the drain process uh, a little bit easier. It's not essential. I don't recommend to do that in the, uh, in the Audi VW uh, workshop manual, uh, but it is uh, an optional thing. It does uh, make for a slightly easier drain. Now, when it comes to doing the drain itself, what you might be thinking is, well, I'll remove this uh, drain plug and get this fluid drained out. However, you should never touch this uh, drain plug here until you've tested the uh, fill plug. You need to make sure that this fill plug can definitely be removed before you do anything with the drain plug. The reason being, of course, if you uh, take this drain plug out, let all the fluid out, then you come up here and try and remove this and something goes wrong here, and maybe this, the uh, bolt rounds off or something like that, and you can't get that out, you've got no way of getting that fluid back in, and so then you're stuck uh, with a car uh, that can't be driven, and so you're gonna have to get it towed to a, a garage or something like that and that's a headache that you don't need. So just remember before you ever touch this, always make sure that you can actually, that you're going to be able to get that fluid back in first. So you crack that one off first, make sure you're happy before you ever look at doing the drain. So it's always a good idea on these plugs to just give them a bit of a clean out because they've got some kind of a mud or dirt in there. And uh, what I want to do is just give them, a, I'm just using a metal hook tool here, just give it a bit of a clean out on the inside like that. The reason being is when I put the, uh, the hex bit uh, inside there I want to make sure that that goes in as deep as possible so if that's all corroded in there or there's loads of dirt in there and I, I only managed to kind of put it in halfway uh, then obviously that's got a much higher chance of it rounding off I mean these aren't in particularly tight so it's probably not a uh, uh, probably won't happen in this instance uh, but as a good uh, kind of a general uh, rule of thumb always try and clean the uh, middle of these out so you can get that uh, that bit in as deep as possible also you tend to get these kind of little uh, calcium ish deposits uh, around the, uh, the outside uh, so it's often a good idea just to roll the uh, not very hard you don't want to score it just to knock that off uh, using the, uh, the hook tool again I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, penetration fluid just around the head here just because we do have a little bit of scum uh, that's built up uh, I'm using uh, plus gas here uh, but there are you know things like liquid wrench uh, things like that even uh, WD-40 is uh, quite good at this little tiny bit on it like that can sometimes make the job a little bit easier so these plugs they usually have a, a hex a head on them uh, on this audi q7 here uh, they're at eight millimeter another little tip for you these ones are pretty clean so again it doesn't really apply here uh, but if yours have got a little bit of corrosion in them uh, and you'll when you put this uh, put it in you can feel some resistance if you give it a light tap And you make sure that, that bit goes into the end of that uh, plug as deep as possible so again you know if you do have corrosion in there last thing that you want is for you to start turning this and for it to round off and so by ensuring that that bit's in as deep as possible you're minimizing the possibility of that happening so these are only uh, torqued up to around uh, 20 newton meters so even with a little bit of uh, uh, scum that we've got built up around the uh, sides these shouldn't be that tight there you go So again, you'll note, uh, as I mentioned before, we're starting on the uh, fill plug. We're not touching the uh, drain plug at all at this stage. And so with the fill plug, if you're not doing the drain straight away, you can just pop that back in like that, uh, just whilst you get yourself sorted. But once you're ready to uh, do the drain, that's always a good idea just to, uh, to take that out what that will do is allow the air to go in here which will displace the oil and you get a much uh, smoother flow so rather than glugging in and out of uh, the air going in and out of this uh, it can just go in this hole until you get a nice uh, smooth drop in that fluid so next we're removing the drain plug now obviously when you remove this drain plug there will be oil in there and so oil is going to come out so you've got to make sure you've got your drip tray ready to catch the oil And because there's not a lot of fluid in here, obviously it's not going to take very long to drain. Uh, we've left this probably about uh, five, six minutes, something like that. As you can see, we're down to a really, really, really slow drip. So we're ready to continue. Now on the uh, plugs here, uh, they're identical on this uh, particular transfer case. Uh, you can see uh, they've got this kind of red coloration. And that's because uh, as per the uh, Audi and VW workshop manual, when you reinstall these, uh, you're meant to install some of this sealant. 
and we will add on the screen for you the part number of the genuine Audi VW sealant. Uh, however, of course, you don't need to use the, uh, the genuine sealant, uh, any kind of um, suitable uh, nut lock t uh, type of product uh, will do. So this is the product that we're going to be using. Uh, ignore the brand, uh, hundreds of different companies make this kind of stuff. Uh, this particular brand uh, does uh, one that's called a nut lock uh, and another that's called a stud lock. The uh, nut lock is the non-permanent and the stud lock is the permanent. But different brands call them different things. Uh, for example, uh, other brands I know, they call them both stud lock, but they do a non-permanent stud lock and a permanent stud lock. So whatever product it is that you use on here, you need to make sure it is the non-permanent type. If you use a permanent stud lock product, essentially that's like a glue. That's designed for something that's not going to be uh, coming out again. So if you use a permanent product on this, you're really, really going to struggle to get it out and you might not be able to. Whereas obviously a non-permanent product is designed uh, to be opened again, which is uh, at some point in the future, obviously, this will need to be removed again. So you need a non-permanent one. And all we want is a thin layer of it. Uh, we don't we want to try and avoid getting it on the, uh, on the end here. So just a very, very thin bead of it. Trying to keep it on the, uh, this is probably a little bit too much here. Spread this out rather than add more. There we go, just make sure you go all the way around with it, a nice thin layer. Notice I'm trying to keep it on uh, kind of the rear uh, half, if that makes any sense. Just trying to keep it away from the, uh, the end there. That's plenty. I'm just going to clean this off, uh, making sure that I don't put any of the uh, little bits of dirt uh, into the hole. Like that. Ready to install the plug. So now I've got my uh, uh, drain plug uh, complete with my uh, nut lock. I'm just going to tighten that in. So now you need to grab your torque wrench and make sure that you torque your drain plug up to the proper specification. On our Audi Q7 here, it is 20 newton meters. But of course, that can vary model to model. So if you're unsure on that, uh, your best bet is to do a quick Google search. And because we've got a bit of a nut lock just around the outside there, it's going to give that a real good clean. Uh, because if there are any uh, leaks uh, during the uh, fill process, I need to know straight away. So I want to get this as bone dry uh, as I can. Now annoyingly on the uh, particular product that we have which is this um, uh, Valvoline uh, it just comes with a normal uh, screw top uh, but ideally what you want is something that comes with uh, one of these types of caps. Uh, this, this cap comes on um, typical kind of gear oils normally uh, but obviously uh, not on uh, ATF. Now, thankfully these are usually interchangeable. Let's find out. Yes, so whenever you get one of these types of uh, bottles, it's always worth keeping hold of at least the, uh, the lid because sometimes you'll get something like this and obviously this is going to be uh, really, really helpful uh, for us to get the uh, fluid into our transfer case. Now the alternative to this, if your bottle doesn't come with one of these types of lids and you haven't got one that you can steal off of another bottle, then you're going to have to use something like a funnel, which you may have to uh, couple up with a piece of a uh, tubing uh, to get the uh, fluid into the hole. Uh, but if you can get one of these caps, these tend to make the job a lot easier. It's always a good idea to see what kind of access you have uh, for the uh, bottle here. As you see on this uh, Q7, we've got this uh, lovely kind of space up here uh, so we can get this uh, bottle in uh, quite easily. Uh, sometimes it's not quite this uh, easy and sometimes you may even have to find that you have to uh, chew, uh, uh, feed off a piece of tubing uh, from this to come out kind of out the side of the car, similar to doing a, a front or a rear diff. Uh, if you need any uh, help on that, you can check out our uh, front or rear diff videos. We'll add um, links in the uh, video description below. So what I'm doing is just uh, gently squeezing the oil in. It should take a little over half of the container that I've got here. And what I'm looking for is we should get to a stage where we see the uh, oil start to come back out of the hole. Could be it there. I'm just going to carry on there. That didn't seem like uh, that could have just been a single drip from the bottle. Oh, 
and just uh, making sure there's a bit of a plastic tube here as well and I've lifted that up just making sure all of that has definitely gone in and when I pull this out I should get quite a bit I come back out yeah look at that got a good flow there so yeah we are definitely uh, at a good level and here we are about two minutes later you can see we've still got this uh, very very slow drip so I'm happy that we're definitely at the uh, at the right level I'm just going to uh, give that a bit of a clean up obviously we can't stop this coming out completely and uh, remember you want to uh, put your uh, nut lock onto the uh, plug uh, before this gets reinstalled And then again, torque this plug up uh, to the correct uh, specification uh, on our Audi Q7 here. It's the same as the other one, uh, 20 newton meters. And again, give this uh, a nice uh, clean up, get rid of any of that nut lock. And also and get rid of any uh, drips of the, uh, the fluid. The reason being is a, it keeps the job tidy, uh, but equally, or if not more importantly, uh, if we do get any uh, drips, you want to be able to spot them immediately so you don't want to mistake uh, an old drip or a drip that you had during the uh, uh, refill process. Uh, you don't want to think that that's a new drip uh, when you come to check it. So now we have our plugs back in, we have no signs of leak, we are effectively job done. So the next stage will be to take your car for a quick uh, 10 to 15 minute test drive, get it nice and warmed up, bring it back, just shine a torch under here and make sure that you're not seeing any signs of leaks uh, coming from the uh, two plugs uh, that we've been playing around with today. And then likewise, assuming that that's okay, after a day or two, just again, just shine a torch down here make sure that there's no leaks and if, you, and if it's still good after a couple of days then you know that you're happy with it and you can sign it off job done so we've come to the end of the process if this video has been entertaining or helpful for you in any way can you take one second out of your busy schedule just to hit that like button for us it really does help us out likewise please consider subscribing we've got loads more great videos waiting for you to check out on our youtube channel we appreciate it and we'll see you again